Hey guys, uh, this is Duli. Uh, so in this video, we will continue talking about threads. In 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 the past uh, three videos, we've talked about how to have the main thread share data with the with the child thread. And the problems we ran into was we were getting some sort of unexpected changes. Uh, to our uh, to our data to the data that we were sharing, uh, uh, because we didn't know when uh, uh, when a thread uh, would be accessing or making changes to that data. Because what we've been essentially doing was you know having a count, increment that count, and then print it. So during the time it would take for some thread to uh, increment account and then go ahead and print it. Uh, by the time it gets there to print it, some of the thread might have come in and, and, and changed that count. So what you may end up with is some numbers missing and or some numbers are pinging twice, uh, which is what we're seeing here. So let's, let's so first of all let me let me show you what I'm doing here. So I have a, a, a list of threads. Right. I have a for loop that will start each of them, and I have a, a, a function uh, that just prints the name of the thread and the count. And this is the function that uh, each thread will be started with. So you got six thread that's gonna go through a for loop and then go into uh, print this statement right here. Increment the count and then print this statement. Now, if we run this. Okay, you can see that some numbers are appearing twice. Well, actually, it just took some time. Okay, this time, actually, it wasn't good. You can see that this 4 here is appearing twice. So that means uh, by the time, well, we don't know which one accessed it first, either 3 or 4, likely 3. But by the time 3 got around to print that statement, 4 had already come in, okay? Had already come in and changed it to 4. So 3 printed 4 and child 4 printed 4 as well. So this is not some sort of behavior you want. And the same thing happened here with 3. So we don't want that behavior. So what we did in the previous three videos was to use join. So g dot join. Okay. So what this will do is have the main thread wait for each thread to finish before the main thread goes ahead, go, goes ahead and continues its, its statements. So now this will this will fix the problem of the accessing and reading the data out of sync but the, the the problem that we we will come across which is what I'm going to attempt to show here by you can see that you know I'm, I'm, I'm getting a start time when the program starts and when the program finishes and since I'm using a joint statement a join statement uh, we expect the, the, the program the main thread to wait for all these threads to finish before we get to that print statement. So it will give us an approximation of how long the program took. And inside the print function, I'm just asking whatever thread it is to just wait for some random amount of time between one and five seconds. Okay, so it will give us how long approximately took a thread to run and it will give us how long the whole program took to run. So let's go ahead and do that and see what we get. Okay, it's taking some time. Okay, so the first thread took four seconds, second took three seconds, third took three seconds, uh, uh, the fourth two seconds, fifth, four seconds, and the sixth took two seconds. So that's a total of 20 seconds. Now, this should raise some alarm bells uh, for you because if we're doing thread programming, and the reason we're doing that is to save time, 
the idea is you have a bunch of workers and you have this giant job okay if you were doing that job by yourself it would take a long time but if you have several workers doing that job it would take less time now if you if you're looking at the sum here uh, uh, you get uh, 4 3 that's 7 plus 3 that's 10 and then 2 plus 4 plus 2 that's uh, 8 right here 8 plus 10 that's 18 and plus the little uh, 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 few seconds that are adding up together will give you something close to uh, very close to 20 seconds here so that means each thread is firing up one after the other and you know you have the main pro having the main program waiting like that is not actually good for thread programming in fact we could have this is probably worse than than just writing a for loop and calling the print statement uh, uh, six times six times even with the, the sleeping statements so it, it might we might end up doing better if we did that so the issue here is the fact that we're having the main thread waiting and we don't want to do that and what we want to do is have uh, uh, the parts of our program that are critical to it functioning properly and have it uh, for example not be accessible by two threads at the same time so for this program that we've written it's definitely this part right here uh, the part where uh, the thread is is coming in to to increment the count and then print the count free here so this part we want uh, we want that number to be the same okay so what we want here is to have whenever one thread has made that count change we want that thread to finish printing before some other thread comes in and do something okay so that's where we introduce the lock statement and the lock statement what it does it takes a block of code and then it uh, guarantees that only one thread is going to be accessing that block of code at a time okay so the way you create uh, the way you use a lock is by uh, first creating an object so let's go ahead and create an object okay private static object let's call it my lock let's make sure we respect notations here okay and this is this is going to be a new object. All right, so we have an object. And what we want to do is to lock that object. Okay. My lock. And then in between in between those brackets we want to put the code that we want to be accessed by one thread at a time okay now because now we're no longer gonna call join the main thread the main thread is just gonna keep going and this sort of becomes meaningless it's just going to print uh, 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 right away so a way we can get approximately when this is gonna get end is when the count reaches six so let's just just do a, a check for that if count equals to six let's go ahead and print the duration of the program okay now this is not going to be exact it's going to give us uh, uh, an approximation of, of, of what's happening in the program so let's look at what we've done so we created a lock okay we created a lock and then we locked this part of our program the part where the thread will come in make the change to the count and then print the count so 
while while a thread is within this block of code we do not allow another thread to come in so that's what the lock is doing and then we're printing how long it took uh, to run the program and we're also printing how long it took each thread all right so let's run the program and see what happens all right so although each thread is waiting for like three seconds the program is over in three seconds and that's because each thread instead of blocking him from coming from calling the statements they were all doing this ahead of time they were all doing this part ahead of time until they were allowed to get inside this block so when a thread comes in if this lock is in effect meaning that there's a thread currently running this piece of code uh, the other threads essentially just wait uh, in a first in first first serve manner uh, uh, as soon as uh, this lock is relieved the 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 first thread uh, that that you know, that was waiting uh, just goes ahead and execute that statement and then goes out and the next one comes in execute that statement and then goes out so this is uh, what a lock will do for you so now we can scale and, and, and just use as many threads our system can handle. And, you know, using a, a lock like this, you can uh, uh, do much more than with using join. And by the way, join will only stop the main thread, not other threads. So you're very limited if you are using join. So a lock uh, is, is what you want to use when using many threads like that and this will uh, make make things very flexible for you when it comes to using thread and the idea is to make things thread safe and using lock uh, in the in the right parts of your program where things are critical that you don't have threads messing around uh, a lock is something uh, you might want to use all right so this was this uh, video guys go ahead and subscribe uh, uh, if you want to know when these videos are coming up, uh, like uh, the videos if you actually like them. And uh, if you've got questions, please uh, go ahead and ask me. All right. Thanks, guys. See you next time.